Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, you are welcome in this class. The topic of this lecture is Concepts of Balanced Plant Nutrition and Integrated Nutrient Management. Sometimes it is called as Integrated Plant Nutrient Supply also. Different names and acronyms are used, but overall it is Integrated Nutrient Management. Learning objectives are to understand the concepts of balanced fertilization or balanced plant nutrition and integrated nutrient management and learn the various components, practices and impacts of integrated nutrient management and of course balanced fertilization. The glossary, some words like balanced fertilizer. A balanced fertilizer contains all essential elements in the right proportion for the growth of a plant or a crop. Biofertilizers, substance which contains living microorganisms which when applied to seeds, plant surfaces or soil colonize the rhizosphere or the interior of the plant and promotes growth by increasing the supply or availability of primary nutrients to the host plant. So these biofertilizers are applied in soil or applied via seed and they, there are different other mechanisms also but they help in the fixation of nutrients like rhizobium or azotobacter some are symbiotic and some are asymbiotic. Biogas slurry, the residue obtained after fermentation of animal dung in a biogas plant, it contains 1.4 to 1.8 percent nitrogen, 1.1 1 .1 to 1.7 percent phosphorus and 0.8 to 1.3 percent potassium and used as a manure. So biogas, I think most of you understand that uh, dung is taken from the livestock and it is a fermented anaerobically which produces methane and carbon dioxide and this methane is used for lighting or for making cooking the food in rural areas or villages and it also yields biogas slurry, slurry. So slurry is used as a manure. It can be directly applied to the field with irrigation water or it can be applied after drying it. But thing is that there is no waiting period. The CN ratio is narrowed down and you can immediately apply to the field. And it is very, very advantageous because it is richer in nutrients than farmyard manure or than the original constituents. Fertilizer, the natural or manufactured solid or liquid material added to the soil to supply one or more nutrients essential for growth and development of a plant or crop. So fertilizers can be synthetic artificial and some can be natural also, some can be mild also. Integrated nutrient management. It involves maintenance and adjustment of soil productivity and plant nutrient supply to achieve a given level of crop production by optimizing the benefits from all possible sources of plant nutrients. Law of minimum. If one of the nutrients from the soil or air is deficient or lacking, the growth and development of the plant will be incomplete even when all other elements are in abundance or they are in sufficient quantity. Only one which is limited can affect the availability and uptake of other or effect of other. Nutrient budget deals with the quantitative estimation of major nutrients provided to the soil, retained by the soil after the harvest and taken away by the plant. Organic amendment, additives used for improving the physical condition of the soil or to improve plant nutrition, for example, crop residues, animal manures and food processing waste. Organic fertilizers, fertilizers prepared by processing a combination of materials of biological origin, unprocessed mineral materials li like lime, rock phosphate, etc rural compost and town compost. So rural compost 
obtained from the diverse organic materials from rural areas such as cattle dung, cattle urine, crop residues or farm waste uh, such as weeds, straw, chaff, leaves, sugar cane, waste and groundnut husk, etc. Then town com compost as the name su suggests, it is from the refuse of town. So compost produced from the material of urban origin like street sweepings, dustbin refuse also called as urban compost. Now question comes that why we need balanced fertilization or balanced plant nutrition and integrated plant nutrient management. What are the purposes? So number one is that there is decline in soil fertility. In many areas of the country, the soils are getting depleted in nutrients. Organic matter content in Indian soil is also declining. So there are some serious issues related to decline in fertility, particularly nutrient depletion and nutrient mining. Low nutrient use efficiency when you apply fertilizer or organic manure, whatever sources of nutrients we apply, particularly chemical fertilizer, the nutrient use efficiency is low. And also response to fertilizer is declining, means what we were getting from 1 kg fertilizer 20 or 30 years before, we are not getting the same. We are getting less and less from the fertilizer. This is known as declining response of crops to fertilizer. There may be many more reasons for balanced fertilization and integrated nutrient management, but we are considering only the three, the most important three here. So see first how Indian soil fertility is going down, what are the changes occurring in soil fertility or current status of fertility in India. 57% districts had low, 36% medium and 7% high levels of available nitrogen in soil. It was reported by Mosara 2002 and after that no such kind of data is available so we rely on this data. And you can see that most of the districts are deficient in nitrogen, 57%. And then see 51% districts had low, low 40%, medium and 9% high. You can see same is the case with phosphorus where 51% districts were deficient. Now there may be many more districts. Similarly, 9% districts had low, 42% medium and 49% high level of available K. So K is not that big concern, uh, at that time 9% districts were there but now it must have increased. So overall you can see that the macronutrients N, P, K status is not very healthy in our soils. And see the status of micronutrients reported by Shukla and Behra in 2012. You can see this uh, percentage samples deficient. They have also collected large samples from the country and analyzed for micronutrients and they found that 33% uh, of the samples were deficient in boron, 8% uh, in copper, 15% uh, in iron, 6% in manganese and 44% in zinc and molybdenum 13%. So overall you can see that the micronutrient deficiencies have also appeared under Indian context. Also there are reports of sulfur deficiency in a larger area. Now you see uh, this, this is the impact of the green revolution on the emergence of mac micronutrient deficiencies in crops in India. In 1950s we started with the deficiency of nitrogen, then 1960s nitrogen uh, and iron. So you can see across the years 50s, 60s, 1965, 70 and so on and up to 2020. Nitrogen is uniformly there in all the years. So you can see that nitrogen is universally deficient in all the year, all the time. Similarly, you see iron is starting from 1962 up to now and in future also. See the case of phosphorus. Phosphorus deficiency started from 1965 and it is continuing. See that zinc, zinc is deficient throughout and then see potassium rho, it is deficient and then sulfur then manganese and so on. So manganese deficiency came in 1980s and then boron deficiencies in 1985 and then molybdenum 1990 and then 2000 copper or manganese copper and so on. So you can see that 
the purpose of showing this figure is that our soils are becoming deficient in several nutrients. They are universally deficient in nitrogen, deficient in zinc, means most of the soil. 50 percent soils in the country are deficient in nitrogen and zinc at least. See the zinc deficient soils map of India. So, most of the area you can see they are zinc deficient. Issues of, uh, so after the status of the soil fertility is going down and second is that we have low nutrient use efficiency. So, let us just understand what is nutrient use efficiency. The nutrient use efficiency can be defined as the maximum economic yield produced per unit of nutrient applied. Here N means nutrient applied, absorbed or utilized by the plant to produce grain and straw. So, you can see efficiency of anything is output divided by input, how much we get and how much we, uh, we add. Now, uh, this nutrient use efficiency can be referred or can be explained or described in several ways. One is agronomic ways, other is so soil scientist for the soil scientists and there may be some agroeconomic efficiencies. Varieties of uh, efficiencies have been worked out or suggested by several scientists. So, now we concentrate mostly on agronomic nitrogen use efficiency or nutrient use efficiency and taking the case of cereal crops, rice, wheat, maize. So, first index is partial factor productivity of applied nitrogen, kg harvest produce per kg nitrogen or nutrient applied. So, partial factor productivity, see the formula in column number 2 partial factor productivity of nutrient or nitrogen is equal to y n divided by f n. y n means yield in nitrogen or nutrient applied plot divided by rate of fertilizer application or nitrogen application. This is partial factor productivity and normally it is uh, 40 to 70 kg grain per kg nitrogen for fa partial factor productivity and more than 70 kg is also possible per kg nitrogen at low rates of nitrogen or in very efficiently managed systems. As you know, as we increase the rate of application of the nutrient, the use efficiency generally declines because this uh, rate of application is denominator. So, if you increase the denominator and numerator is same, then your efficiency goes down. AEN, agronomic efficiency of applied nitrogen kg yield increase per kg nitrogen. So, it is uh, AEN uh, agronomic efficiency of applied nitrogen or nutrient is equal to y n minus y 0 divided by f n. y n means yield of a crop uh, received from the nitrogen or nutrient applied uh, plot minus yield from the control where you have not applied the nutrient or nitrogen and divided by fertilizer rate, rate of the nutrient application. So, general range is 10 to 30 kg grain per kg nitrogen. This is matter of concern. This is low, 10 to 30 kg grain per kg nitrogen. So, this needs concern. Uh, more than 30 kg per kg in well managed system or at low levels of nitrogen. So, these examples are given for nitrogen, which suggests that use efficiency is really very, very low. Now, see recovery efficiency of applied nutrient or applied nitrogen it is kg increase in n uptake per kg n applied nutrient applied and see column 2 calculation or formula recovery efficiency of nutrient or nitrogen is equal to u n minus u 0 divided by f n u n is your uptake of nutrient or nitrogen from the treatment or plot where it was applied minus from the control where no treatment was applied no nitrogen no nutrient divided by rate of nutrient application. So, common values are uh, 0 0.30 to 0 0.5 or you can convert it into percentage, you can say 30 to 50 percent recovery of the fertilizer nutrient is there and in best managed uh, cases it can be possible 50 to 80, but most of the situation uh, for cereal crops in India it is 30 to 50 percent, for rice it is generally less than 40 percent. So, this is really serious concern because we lose lot of nutrients and we get less and environmental pollution is also there and economics also does uh, do not favor this 
low recovery efficiency. Next is physiological efficiency of applied nitrogen kg yield increase per kg increase in nitrogen uptake or nutrient uptake from the fertilizer. Pn is equal to Yn minus Y0 divided by Un minus U0. So, Yn is your uh, yield, yield from the fertilized plot minus yield from the control plot divided by uptake of the nutrient or nitrogen from the treated plot or treatment plot minus uptake of nitrogen U0 is uptake of uh, nutrient from the, the plot or field where it was not applied from the control. So, normally it is 30 to 60 kg per kg and more than 60 kg per kg in well managed system, again matter of concern. So, overall you can see that nutrient use efficiency and taking the case of nitrogen it is really very low. And Paroda 2006 also said that average utilization rate of fertilizer nutrients by first crop in India is for nitrogen, fertilizer nitrogen it is 30 to 50 percent means half of the nitrogen we apply goes waste. Nitrogen manure, uh, nitrogen from manure 20 to 40 percent, phosphate, phosphorus use efficiency is very low 15 to 20 percent. Potassium is uh, little better 30 to 40 percent and then micronutrient the most less it is 0.5 to 5 percent. So, you can see the use efficiency is low, our fertility are also low, soil fertility is also low and third why do we need higher nutrient use efficiency? Now question comes. In the last case you have seen the data, use efficiencies are very low. And then why we want to increase it? What is the purpose? So there is some economic purpose that low recovery means apply more fertilizer for the same yield. Means you need to pay more for the input or cost of the fertilizer. Environmental low recovery means, means your environmental pollution. Other purpose is political purpose may be there. High efficiency will reduce the dependency on the other countries for raw materials. So, this is also true and also uh, government of India is giving lot of subsidies on the fertilizer. If efficiency is improved that means consumption of the fertilizer will reduce and so will the subsidy on fertilizer. So, technological purposes are it has been proved that it is possible to enhance the nutrient use efficiency. So, all these, uh, para, uh, these aspects have been reported by Pathak 2016. So, you can see uh, we need to improve the nutrient use efficiency. Now, there is third most reasons for going to balanced fertilization and integrated nutrient management is uh, evidences have come up long back to declining uh, crop response to fertilizer. Means, the responses of the crop to the application of fertilizer have declined. Means what we were getting say 20, 30 years before, we are not getting the same. With the passage of time, we are getting less and less and less crop out, output from the fertilizer use. So, that is decline in crop response. So, according to IESRA, Indian Agricultural Statistics Research Institute, New Delhi, the overall crop response rate, response rate students can remember it is kg grain per kg NPK means how much grain you get by applying 1 kg N plus P2O5 plus K2O. For fertilizer has been declining over the years from 7.51 is to 1 uh, is to uh, in 1992-97. That means by applying 1 kg NPK in form of N, P2O5, K2O, you were getting just 7.5 kg grain. And in 97, 99, it has come down to 6.5 means by using 1 kg NP205 K2O, you are getting 6.5 kg grain means it is declining, it is reducing and the same case will be today also. The data from trials in farmers field conducted by PDCSR, it is uh, project directorate of cropping system research. Now, its new name is Indian Institute of Farming System Research, Modipuram Merit. So, during 1999 to 2003, they have showed that the average response of cereal to fertilizer was meagerly at 8 to 9 kg grain per kg fertilizer. So, you can see some more evidences for reduced uh, use efficiency uh, response of fertilizer. You can see from this table, uh, soil test crop response based fertilizer application. 
first column you can see different crops rice wheat maize raya so on and number of trials conducted and at farmers field what response they they got and if you use stcr ipns practice stcr is your soil test crop response ipns means integrated plant nutrient supply system so if you follow this approach ipns approach you can increase the crop response so in rice it was 11.4 kg in farmers practice but in stcr ipns it increased to 16.8 for wheat 10.3 14.2 so you see in all the cases by adopting this stcr you can increase the response to fertilizer and at farmer condition it is very low so considering all these aspects we need to in, uh, uh, enhance the nutrient use efficiency declining responses to fertilizer reduce fertility of the soil and low use efficiency of nutrients or fertilizer so because of this we must increase the nutrient use efficiency but how can we enhance it how we can improve the nutrient use efficiency there are several options suggested by park pathak 2016 so you can see strategic options may be improving supply and demand synchrony improvement in soil health improvement in varieties there may be some management options like site specific nutrient management integrated nutrient management improving application methods improving fertilizer formulations integrated crop management these are management options and some policy policy options are also there communication and dissemination of technologies improving management skills of farmers private public partnerships infrastructure subsidy and crop insurance and tools and technologies are also there a leaf color chart uh, decision support system remote sensing gis and precision farming in precision farming particularly emphasis is given on balanced fertilization so overall out of all these options and approaches today here in this lecture we will discuss balanced fertilization and integrated uh, nutrient management practices as a means to solve many of the problem and improve the nutrient use efficiency as well as soil health so let us start uh, balanced fertilization and integrated nutrient management so what is balanced fertilization or crop nutrition essential plant nutrients are present at optimum levels and ratios so that there are neither any deficiency nor excess that is your balanced crop nutrition IPNS integrated plant nutrient supply optimizes the benefits from all possible sources of plant nutrients so here you can combine the locally available organic sources inorganic sources bio fertilizer whatever resources of nutrients are available that can be com combined but in a optimized way of plant nutrients including locally available ones in an integrated manner while ensuring environmental quality now we start with balanced fertilization and balanced fertilization the initially the concept was for first time proposed by uh, justus von liebig from germany in 1840 in the form of the law of diminish the law of minimum so what is law of minimum plant yield is primarily dependent on the factor that is most in the minimum even if all the essential nutrients are adequately supplied the growth may be limited by another factor say water now the water is adequately supplied then growth may be limited by the next factor which is deficient so this law is very very important and it is the basis for balanced fertilization and relevant even today also so it suggests that uh, the strength of the chain is decided by the weakest link the weakest link will decide the total strength of the chain you you can uh, understand by one example that you have uh, your food before you you have your salad you have roti chapati rice dal sabzi everything is there in your food but you do not have you forgot to add salt if salt is not there then this food will be useless to you you will not eat it but if you put the salt you can use this food similarly plant needs 17 essential element if one is uh, absent the others cannot be utilized by plant properly 
So, you can see a Liebig barrel, it, this was used to explain the concept of law of minimum and Liebig's barrel to explain the law of minimum by Dovenex used the image of a barrel often called Liebig's barrel to explain it and just as the capacity of the barrel with the staves of unequal length is limited by the shortest stave, so is plant's growth is limited by the nutrient which is in the shortest supply. So, you can see this stave and you can put some liquid in this uh, barrel sorry barrel and then you see the staves are at different height. So, the stave which is having shortest height will decide the quantity of uh, material that can be held by this barrel. Uh, you can understand the same thing by this picture also. Suppose on x axis you have growth factor say it is fertilizer or nutrient on by y axis you have plant response that can be represented by letter y. So, you see the if there is no any limitation the plant growth will be following a linear response or rather increasing response, but here many factors can, can be limited. Uh, this is just hypothetical example that your variety may be limited, you are increasing the fertilizer rate, but if variety is not responding to increasing rate. It may be local variety, but if you change the variety, if you put some hybrid variety, it can respond to the higher level. Uh, suppose you have changed the variety and then the another factor will become limiting. Say pest, pest uh, population may become limiting, it can eat your crop, it can reduce the growth. Anyway, if you can overcome this, then another factor will become limiting. So, it goes on. So, there are so many factors which can affect the growth. Growth is result of the cumulative interaction of several factors. So, now uh, after understanding the concept of balanced fertilization, let us have some more idea about balanced fertilization. So, definition is that it refers to the application of plant nutrients in optimum quantities in the right proportion or right balance through appropriate methods at the time suited for a specific crop and agroclimatic situation. That is the best definition of balanced fertilization. It leads to restoration of soil health, while imbalanced fertilization leads to the mining of soil nutrients and soil organic carbon stocks causing soil sickness. It is very well said that no fertilization is better than imbalanced fertilization. It is reported by many scientists. So, it is only the restoration of soil health that leads to a sustainable land use system where most food grain production continues to come from the land already appropriated for agriculture. Nutrient balance is a key component in enhancing crop productivity. It ensures efficient use of all the nutrients since the deficiency of any one essential nutrient limits the efficient use of all other nutrients even when they are available in adequate quantities. So, this is how uh, Liebig explained his law. Fertilizer promoters in India advocate the use of N is to PTO5 is to K2O fertilizers in the ratio of 4 is to 2 is to 1. That is ideal ratio or magic ratio you can call it. Most of the soil scientists and agronomists agree to this ratio. But this ratio has been very, very distorted in our country in the favor of nitrogen. Means farmers use more of nitrogen in comparison to, to phosphorus and potassium. There are very strong evidences of this distorted ratio in the country and which is matter of concern and it leads to several problems like uh, decline in soil health, environmental pollution and uh, reduction of biodiversity. So, this ratio 4 to 1 is generally considered to be an ideal one for achieving the maximum use efficiency. If one nutrient is present in large amounts, it may depress the uptake of some other nutrients and reduce crop yield. Thus, there must be proper balance also. So, in one case there, were, there may be some deficiency, but sometimes certain nutrients can be in excess and they can, they can create the imbalance. For example, excess of phosphorus will lead to a reduced availability of zinc and if you increase the levels of zinc in soil by fertilizer application, 
it can reduce the availability of phosphorus. So, they have antagonistic effect. So, therefore, in such kind of nutrients or not just such, such kind of nutrients, all the nutrients should be in right proportion, right balance in the soil, so that you get the optimum plant growth. Now, see this example from Prasad uh, 1996 uh, and he, he has given this data on effect of balanced fertilization on agronomic efficiency uh, of nitrogen, agronomic efficiency AEN. So, you can see in the first column you have different crops, rice, rice, wheat, palmillet and then you have controlled yield where fertilizer was not applied and then in the next column you have nitrogen applied kg per hectare and then in the next column you have agronomic uh, efficiency of nitrogen kg grain per kg nitrogen nitrogen alone and then you have added p and k to the nitrogen means npk and last is your increase in agronomic efficiency so take the case of rice and see the yield at nitrogen alone it is 14 kg grain and then if you add pk to nitrogen it becomes 27 therefore it is 100 percent increase almost double from 14 it has become 27 for rice in summer 11 it has become 81 means 671 uh, percent increase in agronomic efficiency of nitrogen so see in all these cases by addition of p and k along with nitrogen improve the agronomic efficiency of nitrogen. So, there are lot many evidences, lot many data from our country suggesting these kind of responses. See this response is from Punjab Agricultural University Ludhiana by Singh and co-workers 2004 and they have uh, done it for different crops and uh, soil type and locations, different locations they, they have taken Ludhiana, Palampur and Pandagar and see the nitrogen recovery and phosphorus recovery. Uh, take the first case, case of maize, nitrogen recovery is 16.7 percent when you use nitrogen alone, but see the next column NP. So, here it has improved to 23.5 and then again if you add potassium also NPK, then it becomes 36.4 and see the phosphorus recovery in the next column, it, is, it was 10.3 percent when NP was added but if you add NPK means K was added to NP then it increased to 221.4 means phosphorus recovery was doubled by application of potassium. So, see the positive interaction this is just one I tried to explain to you and you can get the meaning here that uh, balanced fertilization is increasing use efficiency of the nutrients you are applying them. So, you can see case of wheat also wheat in Palampur you can see here and the use efficiency of nitrogen was just 1.9 percentage nitrogen recovery and then it increased to 35.6 uh, when NP was used and 50 percent when NPK was used. So, phosphorus uh, use efficiency also increased from 10 to 15 percent when you use NPK over NP. So, see some more data for sulphur also, here the case is for nitrogen plus phosphorus plus sulphur. So, for soybean for example, if you apply nitrogen, there is 50, uh, 550 kg per hectare yield, but if you apply N plus P, you add the phosphorus also, it has uh, rather 3 times more productivity, 1460 kg per hectare yield. Um, and if you add sulphur also to nitrogen plus phosphorus, then it increases to 1680. So, in any case you are seeing that addition of sulphur is increasing the yield of all the crops means balanced fertilization is a good idea. Now, see overall advantages of balanced fertilization increasing crop yields, improving the quality of the produce, increasing profit margin, correcting inherent soil nutrient deficiencies maintaining or improving the long term soil fertility and productivity, advancing environment safety, restoring fertility and productivity and so many advantages are there. And the most important thing is that you will get the optimum yield and you will get the good soil health and also the response to individual nutrient will also increase and this will finally, lead to less use of fertilizer and reduction in the cost of fertilizer 
and margin or profit margin will increase. Now, after balanced fertilization, see another important aspect that is integrated nutrient management. In balanced fertilization, you have seen that uh, all the nutrients should be in balanced amount and uh, should be applied by right method and right source and right time. So now, what will be the right source to apply these nutrients? Because fertilizer alone will not work the best. Only biofertilizer are not sufficient. So overall, what can be done? Under the, these circumstances, we should opt for integrated nutrient management. So let us see integrated nutrient management means, uh, or it is also called as integrated plant nutrient supply system. It is an approach which adapts plant nutrition to a specific farming system and particular yield targets, the resource base, the available plant nutrient source and socioeconomic background given by Dudal and Roy 1995. Since plant nutrients are involved in cycles, IPNS or INM involves monitoring all the pathways of flow of nutrients in an agricultural production system to maximize the profit on a farm so that farming as a profession is continued which is the only way to produce food globally. Thus, IPNS demands a holistic approach. Holistic approach means it is good for the environment, it is good for the farmer, good for the income, good for the soil, good for biodiversity and good for crops. So every aspect is happy here. So demands a holistic approach to nutrient management for agricultural production. For a true INM program, monitoring of all incoming nutrients including, including those in irrigation water and outgoing nutrients from a farm has to be done. Means you need to develop a budget, budget of the nutrients, what are the inputs and what are the output. So inputs are not just your fertilizer or manure. Input can be biological nitrogen fixation. It can be from the environment, environment some form of rains also come like acid rain or irrigation water canal water and we know some places in Karnataka where potassium rich water is available. So likewise in some places there may be boron rich water which can become toxic also. So we need to account, we need to count those nutrients also which are coming from unknown sources or unaccounted sources. So they should also be considered in INM program. So however all for all practical purposes and in a simpler words, IPNS involves judicious combined use of chemical fertilizers, organic manures including crop residues, green manures, biofertilizer and most agronomic experimentation is centered around it. So there could be many more sources but it depends upon the local availability. According to that farmers can combine those organic sources with fertilizers and biofertilizers. Now see what are the different components of integrated nutrient management. Legumes in cropping system act as a source of nutrient because they fix nitrogen, they can act as a source of nutrient. So they can be very effective source of nutrient. Farmyard manure, compost manure is available in rural areas, vermicompost, poultry manure, biogas slurry, press mud cake is a, a product from a byproduct from sugarcane in, industries and it can be applied as a manure and many farmers are using in uh, areas where sugar factories are there, this press made cake and some of that is rich in sulphur also. Biocompost, phosphocompost is a waste product and it is very cheaper and contains sulphur. So it can also be used as a source. Seaway sludge after treatment, crop residues, uh, you know many examples Farmers are burning residues in Punjab, Haryana, Western UP and some certain other parts. So that can be stopped and these crop residues can be directly incorporated into the soil. Technologies are available to use the residue incorporation in the soil or otherwise it can be converted into a compost and that compost can be used or recycled. Biofertilizers are very important component of uh, integrated nutrient supply because they are free. You need not to uh, invest lot of money. Uh, they are low cost, you can say, very cheaper source of nutrients and they are uh, 
for increasing the fixation of nutrient, increasing the availability of nutrients like phosphorus, mycorrhiza, etc. So, variety of biofertilizers are available, some solubilize the nutrients and some increase the availability of the nutrients also. And chemical fertilizers of course, they cannot be totally abandoned. We must use chemical fertilizer, but we should avoid the single use of chemical fertilizer. They should be combined with all other possible sources of nutrients. Fertilizers are very, very important for food security, but they should be used or combined judiciously with the organic manures and biofertilizers. Now, let us see some results on INM long term feed experiment in India. High intensity crop rotations were followed 2 to 3 crops per year under irrigated conditions and level of crop productivity is also too high 8 to 12 tons grain per hectare per year can be sustained by integrating optimal and balanced fertilizer application rates with 10 to 15 tons of farmyard manure per hectare per year. Means if you want to sustain high potential then you must combine uh, fertilizers with manures. So, integrated use of fertilizer manure or lime where needed give higher and more sustainable yields. In rain fed agriculture or dry land conditions, medium to high crop yields can be sustained through an integrated use of fertilizer and organic manures. Results of a 9 year field trial with dry land finger millet in the red soil in Bangalore, the obtained best yields were obtained when recommended rate of fertilizer was combined with 10 tons of farmyard manure per hectare. It was only at this input level that grain yields of 3 ton per hectare and above could be harvested in 8 out of 9 years. In rice wheat coping system of Karnal, at Karnal application of 15 tons farmyard manure per hectare to rice was 88 to 92 percent as efficient as an application of 150 kg nitrogen, 60 kg P2O5 and 60 kg K2O means uh, the nutrient source farmyard manure was comparable with the chemical fertilizers. While in wheat an application of 20 to 40 ton FYM per hectare was only 38 to 45 percent as efficient as an application of 150 kg and 60 kg P2O5, 60 kg K2O per hectare. So, re results are not very very consistent. Sometimes fertilizer can give you better result. Sometimes organic manures can give you better result, but their combination will give you always you the better results. When only FYM was used as a source of plant nutrients, there was a decrease of 5 to 15 percent in rice grain yield. Higher yield decrease in wheat was uh, say 35 to 58 percent. It could be due to slower decomposition of FYM. Uh, wheat is grown in winter months or rabi seasons. So, slower decomposition of uh, this manure results in less supply of nutrients. Therefore, wheat growth was less under organic manure. At Ludhiana, NPK plus FYM recorded an average increase in grain yield of 17.6 percent over NPK in maize wheat rotation over 29 coping system cycles. Increase in grain yield also increases nutrient use efficiency. The advantage of FYM application are many and include supply of plant nutrients and improvement of soil chemical and physical properties. So, not just yield, addition of organic manure also increases physical properties like soil structure, water holding capacity of the soil and the binding of soil particle reduces erosion also. So, there are several indirect benefits of adding organic manures. It may be mentioned that in addition to macronutrients, FYM also supply secondary and micronutrients. In series of experiments, part N NPK was supplied through farmyard manure and the rest through inorganic fertilizer. In a study at Udaipur, Jart and co-workers 2013 reported that application of farmyard manure at 10 tons per hectare along with 50 percent of STR. STR is a state recommended dose of fertilizer produce as, as much grain yield of sorghum as 100 percent STR. So, again evidence is there that it increases yield. Further the increase due to application of 10 ton farmyard manure per hectare was 1 ton per hectare 
with a 75 percent str and 0.9 ton per hectare with 100 percent str so this shows the advantage of farmyard manure with str means you can have farmyard manure with state recommended dose also to get the maximum benefits so these are the results i am discussing with you with respect to uh, integrated nutrient management and there are uh, some all india coordinated project on long term fertilizer experiment now we will discuss uh, some results from that project so most strange interesting results of effect of fym application on soil ph are available from aicrp on long term fertilizer experiment at ranchi where soils are acidic red loams so continuous application of inorganic fertilizers like n np and npk for a period of over 40 years reduce the soil ph from 5.4 to 3.9 to 4.2 while application of fym along with npk increase it to 6.3 6.5 so this is uh, evidence from sarkar and singh 2002 this is very clearly indicating the benefit of farmyard uh, manure in increasing the ph in ranchi most of the soils are acidic in nature and if you apply fertilizer like n npk npk etc so they further acidify your soils but if you use fym it can raise that ph so application of just fertilizer was not good in improving the chemical fertility of the soil but application of farmyard manure improved the chemical fertility that is ph of the soil exchangeable calcium increased from 3 in control plot to 8.25 uh, c mol p plus per kg in fym added plots application of farmyard manure along with npk for 27 years at ranchi increased available npk sulfur copper and manganese so that means um, uh, addition of manures like farmyard can increase your micronutrients also and secondary nutrients sulfur also so similarly application of 50 percent nitrogen as farmyard manure plus 50 percent rdf rdf means recommended dose of fertilizer to rice followed 100 percent rdf to wheat significantly increase available n p and k over an application of 100 percent rdf in rice and wheat at number of research center these are results from all india coordinated trials so you can see that integrated use of chemical fertilizer and organic manure was much better was much useful than the use of 100 percent rdf alone in wet season rice at sri niketan west bengal application of vermi compost containing 1.6 percent nitrogen 1 percent p and 1 percent k applied at 10 ton per hectare along with 50 percent rdf was superior to 100 percent rdf again it was superior and produced 16 percent more rice while an application of fym at the rate of 10 ton per hectare along with 50 percent rdf was at par with 100 percent rdf so i am showing you data from all across the country from different part of the country that to prove that inm was a better practice than rdf in all the ecologies across all the soils and across all the crops because in different part of the country you will find different soils different crops and different management practices and so on so these results show superiority of vermi compost over fym which could be partly due to its higher npk content advantage of applying vermi compost along with chemical fertilizer has also been reported for pigeon pea pigeon pea by pande and co-workers 2013 the result of a field study showed that the application of poultry manure significantly promoted ccm growth and yield so many times poultry manure is also useful because it is a rich source of nutrient seed yield per hectare was increased by 24 and 78 percent as manure rate was increased from 0 to 5 and 10 uh, tons per hectare respectively in 2009 season in 2010 it was increased by 96 and 150 percent 55 percent with the 
सेम इंक्रीज इन द रेट ऑफ पोल्ट्री मैन्योर एक्सपेरिमेंट्स कंडक्टेड एट आई ए आर ए इंडियन एग्रीकल्चरल रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट न्यू डेली शोड दैट नाइट्रोजन अप्लाइड थ्रू बी जी एस बायोगैस सिलरी बी जी एस मीन्स बायोगैस सिलरी वॉज एज इफेक्टिव एज यूरिया फॉर राइस एंड वीट बिकॉज दिस बायोगैस सिलरी इज हैविंग वेरी नैरो सी एन रेशियो नैरो सी एन रेशियो मीन्स मिनरलाइजेशन ऑफ नाइट्रोजन एंड न्यूट्रियट्स इज वेरी फास्ट सो देयर फॉर इट वॉज वेरी इफेक्टिव एंड एज इफेक्टिव एज फर्टिलाइजर्स एट लुधियाना एप्लीकेशन ऑफ फोर्टी परसेंट नाइट्रोजन थ्रू बायोगैस एंड द रेस्ट सिक्सटी परसेंट थ्रू यूरिया वॉज एज एफिशेंट एज हंड्रेड परसेंट थ्रू यूरिया सो अंडर बोथ क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशंस देर वॉज गुड रेस्पॉन्स ऑफ बायोगैस सिलरी एट न्यू डेली एज वेल एज एट लुधियाना इन ए राइस वीट क्रॉपिंग सिस्टम स्टडी एट आई आर ई वैन अप्लाइड ऑन इक्वल नाइट्रोजन बेसिस बी जी एस वॉज टेन पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट मोर एफिशेंट दैन हंड्रेड परसेंट नाइट्रोजन एज यूरिया वाइल सेवेंटी परसेंट नाइट्रोजन थ्रू यूरिया एंड थर्टी परसेंट नाइट्रोजन थ्रू बी जी एस वॉज एट पार विद हंड्रेड परसेंट नाइट्रोजन थ्रू यूरिया रिपोर्टेड बाई भराड़े एंड को वर्कर्स टू थाउजेंड सिक्स द हाइस्ट ऑफ राइस वीट क्रॉपिंग सिस्टम वॉज ऑप्टेंड विद सेवेंटी पूसा नीम माइक्रो इमल्शन कोटेड यूरिया प्लस थर्टी परसेंट नाइट्रोजन एज बायोगैस सिलरी विच वॉज सेवनटीन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट मोर देन हंड्रेड परसेंट नाइट्रोजन एज यूरिया सो दिस पूसा नीम माइक्रो इमल्शन कोटेड यूरिया वॉज मेड इन आई आर ई लॉन्ग बैक एंड इट वॉज यूज फॉर सप्लाइंग नाइट्रोजन बट इट वॉज नॉट ए सक्सेस लेटर ऑन एंड फाइनली इट वॉज कन्वर्टेड इन नीम कोटेड यूरिया विच इज बींग सोल्ड इन द कंट्री नाउ इन ए स्टडी एट लुधियाना एप्लीकेशन ऑफ फाइव टन प्रेसमड प्रेसमड केक आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू इट इज ए वेस्ट प्रोडक्ट और बाई प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम शुगर केन इंडस्ट्री अलॉन्ग विद फोर्टी टू सिक्सटी के जी नाइट्रोजन सो दिस इज मीन्स कंबाइनिंग प्रेसमड दैट इज योर मैन्योर ऑर्गेनिक मैन्योर विद फर्टिलाइजर यूरिया एट फोर्टी टू सिक्सटी के जी एन पर हेक्टर produce rice yield equal to that obtained with 120 kg nitrogen per hectare as urea that means uh, pressment was as effective as your urea further residual effect on succeeding wheat was equivalent to 40 kg nitrogen and 30 kg phosphorus per hectare so this was additional advantage of applying organic manure that is uh, pressment that means these manures have residual effect so they will be supplying nutrients to the current crop or present crop in which you are applying it and also part of the nutrient will would be made available to the succeeding crop or next crop that you will take after taking the first crop so it is uh, having kind of residual effect at faizabad application of 50% nitrogen through pmc pressment cake and 50% through urea to wheat was at par with 120 kg 60 kg, kg p uh, k per hectare chohan and coworkers 2007 so you can see in this study also in faizabad it was uh, proved as good as your chemical fertilizer thus supplying nitrogen through pmc also met the phosphorus and potassium needs of the crop in a study at new delhi application of 5 ton ton biocompost per hectare along with 50% rdf produce the highest yield of wheat and maize 21.8% more of wheat and 6.3% more of maize cobs than 100% rdf application of biocompost with npk also resulted in a significant increase in soil organic and available npk zinc iron copper and manganese so it is not that the, these manures are substituting the macronutrients like npk they are also adding substantial quantity of micronutrients and secondary nutrients so number of studies uh, i have shown you where you have seen that micronutrients are also added by organic manures in a composting study at parvani maharashtra dhawan uh, and co worker 1996 they found NADP uh, NA NADAP compost it is NADAP compost making total phosphorus comp 
content in compost increased from 0.69 to 0.92 percent with RP to 0.98 percent with SSP. Here the message is that NADAP compost was also a good source of nutrient and it could be used. Composting RP with PSB also recorded the highest cited soluble P. Uh, this makes RPP readily available means if you can also use rock phosphate as a source of phosphatic fertilizer but you need to add phosphate solubilizing organism that can increase the availability of phosphorus from the rock phosphate. If you are using water soluble phosphatic fertilizer you need not to use these uh, phosphate solubilizing bacteria or microorganism but in case of rock phosphate it is almost necessary to use biofertilizers. In sugar cane about 10 to 20 percent of the weight of cane harvested is left as a trash on the field which contains about 0.4 percent nitrogen, 0.13 percent phosphorus and 0.5 percent potassium. The trash is generally burnt by the farmer but studies at Lucknow, Yadav and co-workers 1994 shown that leaving the trash as mulch increased the yield of third ratoon by 28 percent. So many times farmers burn this trash which should not be burned because it supplies lot of potassium and nutrients. Sharma Prasad reported an increase in rice wheat grain yield with uh, using sesbania green manure is also a source of uh, nutrients or source of manure that can be used along with rice straw. So therefore if possible rice or wheat residue may be applied in mixture with some legume residues for better results. So many times farmers are skeptical to use the rice straw or paddy straw but you can use it by mixing with the legume residues. Effect of organic manures on crop yields and soil properties vary with the nature, nutrient content in them and the proportion of use. For example, Azam and co-workers 2012 recorded highest grain yield of maize from poultry manure. In the case of integrated nitrogen sources, maximum grain yield was obtained from 25 percent poultry manure plus 75 percent mineral nitrate. nitrogen means it is very clear that part of the nutrient requirement can be substituted by organic sources. Application of poultry manure as a sole nitrogen source result nutrient source resulted in maximum increase in soil total nitrogen and organic matter when compared with other sole nitrogen sources. Among nitrogen sources applied in different proportion, maximum total soil nitrogen was recorded when 25 percent poultry manure plus 75 percent mineral nitrogen used. They concluded from these experiments that integrated application of nitrogen sources in different proportion greatly improved the, improved the nitrogen economy and enhanced crop productivity in low nitrogen soils. Responses of various crops to the application of compost, vermicompost are well documented by vanilla, gore, et al. Many factors such as nutrient status of compost, rate and time of application, soil properties governed the crop response. Field experiments clearly show that the phosphocompost was equally good and comparable with SSP. Benefit of vermicompost in term of uh, improved growth and yield of different field crops, vegetable, flower and fruit crops are well documented. So dear students, uh, I think you are very much clear about the balanced fertilization and integrated nutrient management. In balanced fertilization, you need to supply all the nutrients in right proportion that is right balance, right amount, right time and at right place and also by right method. And similarly, we can supply these nutrients through uh, different sources, through integration of organic sources, inorganic sources and biofertilizer. And this will lead to improved soil fertility, improved farm income and better environment. Hope you liked it. Thank you very much. Thank you.